back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Christian Foster and I am a second year medical student at the UE Mona campus and as you would have seen by the title and also by the first few clips of this video, I've been doing my Anki cards for 100 days straight. So that's 100 days straight, it doesn't mean that I wasn't doing it before that. Um, but I just decided like around three months ago that um, it was in the beginning of the exam period that I wanted to um, start taking Anki more seriously and started doing um, and start doing it every day just to you know see if I could keep up the streak and I managed to keep it up for um, for 100 days so I kind of just wanted to talk about some of the things that I have learned from um, doing this experiment and if I will keep up the streak for you know for the entire um, period of me being in medical school so um, one of the main things that I have learned about doing Anki cards almost every single day is that it's not about prioritizing intensity, but more so just ensuring that you do it consistently and do it every day. So there are days where I would have barely done any cards. Like there were days where I literally just clicked on like a card or like three cards just to ensure that the streak remained as opposed to doing my Anki cards because I wanted to prioritize something else and i used to feel bad about doing that but now i'm realizing that with space repetition um you don't necessarily need to visit the deck every single day for the, the information to stick especially last semester when i was using my anki decks to cover histology lectures and i noticed that i had understood it within like one week and by, by the second or third week, it got kind of boring and I kind of didn't want to do them anymore. So, um, I mean, at the end of the day, repetition is extremely important and um, it can be more beneficial than letting the cards sit and pile up and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it's like, I prefer to know that I have already covered the content and I remember it so I can focus my energy elsewhere. So whether it be another Anki deck or whether it be um, in another method of study, which I will talk about a little bit. Another point I wanted to kind of talk about, which ties into the first one, is that you don't need to do Anki every day. Um, what I noticed is that um especially because I don't use Anki as my main resource um, for studying. Um, I ended up like doing some of the cards for like an hour let's say and I would realize I don't know a lot of the content in the cards so it made it a lot more difficult to cover a lot more material in that time so um, that's kind of something that I would recommend if people are doing Anki um, try to cover the content that you are you're hoping to do the Anki cards for prior because it just makes it a lot more difficult for you in the long run like if you just like um, suspend a deck or something and you your plan is to just all right you say let's let me just cover 100 cards but you've never seen the material before you've never seen the pictures you've never seen any of the words on the screen it is gonna be hell for you to cover those cards because you're gonna have to press again 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 and then sometimes you will end up having what's called a leech so basically a leech is when you have not you've not understood the card yet and you've pressed again like eight times and it just deletes the card and that had happened to me a lot like that would happen to me a lot because you don't really understand the content so you you obviously would not be able to to um to see that card in a few days because you have to keep putting it back so um yeah that's what i would say you definitely don't need to be doing it every single day but i'm also just wanted to see if i could you know keep up the streak so my third point i want to say that because i kind of talked about some of the disadvantages to doing anki but i want to say that you can cover a lot a lot a lot of content in less time by doing anki cards as opposed to using rereading 
and writing notes which are extremely passive methods of studying so um what i noticed is that for instance i'll use the example of histology again because that that was one of my weak points in my first year and i really did not want to fall into that trap in second year so what i did was i made anki cards from my histology lectures and i would do them all the time and i noticed that like i said i only spent like a week trying to memorize the cards as opposed to me sitting through the lecture and trying to recall the information like in that process it made it so much more difficult for me to do that and i noticed that last semester we had a lot a lot of histology because we covered two very heavy anatomy um courses um it was endocrine and we covered um the digestive as well so the fact that we had to um do so many histology lectures it made it more difficult to use each lecture slide as a method of studying so that that's one thing that i really love is the fact that you can cover that much content in way less time like i would end up covering all my like let's say it was for one course i would end up covering most of, if not all of my content by the first half of the day and then in the second half of the day i could end up just using all my time to study and do practice questions and whatnot so that's one of the main benefits to doing anki for me at least is that i don't have to worry about Oh shucks, I haven't covered this yet because in the deck I more than likely have covered the bulk of the content that is in the, the organ system. So yeah, that's one of one of the main um, things I really like about doing anki cards. Another point which is kind of like um, just a tip I would say is that pre-made decks will actually save you a lot more time than than having to make cards. The only problem is because we do medical school in the Caribbean and our program is pretty different to the US program where most of those pre-made decks are coming from um, there's a slight disadvantage because the content where like, whilst it might may be extremely similar there are certain things that my lecturers would consider high yield that lecturers in America or elsewhere would not consider high yield so you have to be pretty vigilant when you're doing pre-made decks like for me I used um, Zanki as my main um, source of um, content in terms of non-anatomy related um, information I use Zanki as my main resource for Anki cards and it was extremely helpful it was very beneficial beneficial for me last semester and this semester as well however I noticed that there were a lot of cards I would see that my lecturers would have specifically said you do not need to know this and it was very difficult having to scrub through all those pre-made decks and removing cards that I didn't need just because um, it's high yield elsewhere and not high yield for my program so um, so yeah the pre-made decks are very helpful but when you can and if you have the extra time, I would suggest making cards. I, I always made my cards for pharmacology, um, just because I don't like pre-made pharmacology cards. Um, so I made my pharma my pharmacology cards from the lectures that my lecturers, well, obviously the lecturers give me the lectures, but from those lectures from school, histology as well, that's why I made them. But for physiology, pathology, and anatomy, pre-made decks. And I'll put, I'll literally put every single one of those those decks I have in the description because I don't gatekeep I'm not that type of person. I kind of mentioned it earlier but for like the last point I wanted to say that Anki should not be your only resource for studying. It should not be your only resource for active recall sorry um, because there are other methods um, I wouldn't say far more effective because Anki is really and truly one of the best methods of studying like I will attest to this a lot of my classmates will a lot of medical students will it's one of the best methods of studying however it should not be your only one so other methods for active recall and two of the main ones that I really love and use all the time is the use of a whiteboard or blank paper when I tell you the active recall you can do on just empty pieces of paper or on whiteboards is on another level you just remember these things and especially when you have like for this semester we we're doing neuroscience and neuroanatomy and if any of my classmates know these tracks are difficult to remember very difficult to remember but then you draw it out you say ah 
this is how, this is where the um the the neuron is synapsing in the spinal cord or if it's going to synapse in your medulla and then you see, and then you remember you remember lesions there as well so if there's a hemisection in your spinal cord and you have brown cicatrics syndrome i'm just saying shit just <laughs> sound like i know something but that's essentially the like it it is so helpful when you draw these things out and especially because we're online we cannot go in person to see cadavers and whatnot so it's it's even more difficult you know to, to to visualize these things in 3d so just drawing them out and repeating that and repeating that and repeating that 100 like you will you will remember these things and the other method for um active recall that is very helpful is practice questions so one of the main resources that i use for practice questions is um is PassMed. So PassMed is, I've, I've mentioned this before, but PassMed is very similar to the UK system. But I think it is a UK Q Bank, and they also do MBBS there. And there, I noticed that there was a free Q Bank where I could access, like you know, all all the organ systems and stuff. So I did it last semester, and I've started doing them for this semester, and it has been extremely helpful because it's one thing to cover the content like what the actual content is and it's another thing to be able to apply it um to to the clinical vignettes which is typically the way that they test us um in med school so so yeah that, that kind of brings me to the end of the video um yeah anki is just one of possibly like the the best things that I discovered kind of late into um, first year. I mean, I did use it in my first semester, but I wasn't consistent with it. So um, I ended up not being able to benefit from it as much as I do now. So yeah, um, would definitely recommend it. Take note of the points that I made because um, everything that has an advantage will have a disadvantage as well. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed.